A good crowd of around 5,000 came to take a look at the world's best cricket team in the form of the Australians, who were pretty much at full strength in their first competitive match in England before the Ashes. As is traditional these days, Sam Northeast invited the tourists to bat after winning the toss, even though conditions were ideal for batting in. A lovely day in the Garden of England, perfect preparation for the Australian batsman. Chris Rogers starting brightly in his first inning since suffering from concussion in the Caribbean. He should have been out though for 19, but was dropped in the slips by Adam Riley off the bowling of Mitch Claydon. Rogers had already set off after edging. The main interest as far as this opening partnership was concerned was all about whether Rogers or Sean Marsh will get the role to open in the first test in Cardiff with David Warner. Marsh took over from the injured Rogers in the West Indies and is obviously very keen to retain his place. And there was little to choose between the two in Canterbury. Rogers was at his 51st, using up 89 balls to get there with a single off Ivan Thomas, who must have been loving this experience, a very worthwhile exercise for all the Kent players, in fact. Marsh's half-century was almost as fluent, his coming off 100 deliveries reached with his sixth boundary. Both of these left-handers had batted very well, as you would expect. Rogers, of course, with bags of experience of accumulating hatfuls of runs in county cricket over the years. In truth, neither batsman had much trouble in scoring their runs, and the Kent fielders knew that they were going to spend a long time grazing. Of course, this match is mostly about the Australians finding their feet in English conditions, and these two not only did that, but had also bought a shoe factory by the time they were out. Their partnership lasted 50 overs and realised 181 runs. Rogers had a second life of sorts when Riley missed a firm drive off his own bowling. But Riley's loss was Matt Hun's gain, the 21-year-old who last played a first-team match at the end of last season, trapping Rogers in front for 84. Hun impressed, giving the world's number one batsman currently, Stephen Smith, some early concerns. There were all sorts of questions about Smith's technique when Australia were last on these shores. There is nothing wrong with it now, as Riley will tell you, after being hit for six. Marsh, meanwhile, did everything he could to earn that test spot, and he went on after Rogers' dismissal to make his 15th first-class 100 off 172 balls. An innings containing a dozen boundaries, it was a typically classy knock from the 31-year-old son of Jeff and brother of Mitchell, who's also playing in this game. Sean went on to make 114 after spending four hours at the crease. Hun returning to the attack to have him caught in the deep of a one-handed shot by Daniel Bell Drummond off the bowler's first ball. Marsh left with the total on 242 for two. So now the attention turned to Smith, a man with a quite ridiculous record over the last 18 months or so. He started life as a leg spinner, but now has a test average in the mid-50s. This was the 47th time in 128 first-class innings that the 26-year-old has made it to at least a 50. This one occupying 80 deliveries, from which he struck four fours and one six. His tour is starting off as his last one ended. Michael Clark, meanwhile, is still trying to find his best form since having surgery on a hamstring during the World Cup. He and Smith were to also make the most of conditions in Canterbury as they comfortably added 95 more runs for the third wicket. This turning out to be just about the perfect day for the touring team. All of their batsmen made it to at least a 50. Clark the latest to do that with this four off the Australian-born Claydon, which had the skipper raising his bat after facing 68 deliveries, from which he now struck eight fours. He and Smith then took the total along to 337 with just three overs of the day remaining. When Clark was strangled down the leg side as Hun picked up a third wicket in an innings for the first time in his career, although this is only his fourth first-class match, he would have enjoyed his day as Clark departed for 56. The time left allowed Shane Watson to hit a couple of boundaries before the close to set his next day up nicely. The Australians ended this one on 348 for three, Smith now needing 29 more runs on the second morning to register the 19th hundred of his first class career. There should be plenty more to entertain what we hope is another good turnout.